was just down there talking about the coyotes and the impact they're having and this guy just pulled I seen him and his name is Ralph and he works with the uh, Bud Adams Ranch which is a very very large ranch around here and Ralph's been down here trapping some of these coyotes so Ralph tell us what's going on about this well they just uh, we've had coyotes move in this country about 18 years ago now nobody really knew the impact that they would have on our wildlife and livestock you know them being new to this part of the country but uh, we've definitely seen uh, where they've worked on a lot of stuff uh, calves come up missing and uh, stomped you know so we've started working on them we uh doing a pretty good job on them there and the state's kind of realizing a lot of it uh, trying to help us with permits you know because you have to use a padded steel trap and uh, have to, uh, like I say, be permitted from the state to do it and uh, they are recognizing the problem but you know we just have to be uh, real careful how we handle it we sure don't want to uh, try to keep the non-targets out uh, the, the native species your cats and stuff like that keep them out of the traps and release them unharmed uh, like I said, a lot of people in the state are recognizing the problem that we are having. Cheyenne, get out. They're shy as she said hello this morning. Yep, yep. Um, Ralph. Eating turtle eggs on the beach uh, all the way through, you know, USDA trappers. Uh, over there trying to get them. They've got them in all the way to the Everglades National Park now. Third Airport's got them on it. Now here they're on Jensen Beach down there, so it's just a matter of time they'll be the turtle eggs there. Uh, you know, so. This is Ralph's daughter, Sienna. I was saying it wrong, and darn it, she didn't get me straight on that. <laughs> <laughs> but Ralph, these things, about breeding with them, uh, how many pups do they normally have? Or Well, it depends. Uh, Mainly, a lot of it's on the food that they have. Of course, us being in a tropical climate, we have a lot of different foods for them, you know, so sometimes their areas are smaller and uh, they won't have as many pups. But anywhere, normally we've seen four to six in this part of the country down south Florida. Uh, usually have a breeding pair for an area. You know, and then those pups will disperse. Uh, that's why it's so important to keep up with some of your trapping. It's just uh, a control method now. It's, it's you know, we're not, we'll never be rid of them. It's just uh, kind of, we try to work on them a little bit, get rid of some of them during the cabin and the farm, drop them, and things like that, you know, and that way it keeps your coach from your neighbor's property. If he's, if he's not doing any control work, They'll eventually some of them move over on you here, so if we can hit them, you know, and get some of them out of here uh, right during the calving or fawning and stuff like that, that gives them gives them calves and them fawns a chance to get their legs under them. You know, they're going to get some of them. There, there's no doubt about that. But uh, you know, they are definitely having a, you know economical impact on stuff uh, as far as hunting leases go. You know, uh, calves. I know a lot of people have never seen a, a coyote just run down a calf, but then we've they've documented it where they have. But anybody that's worked cattle in the state of Florida for years, when we use cow dogs for years, can tell you how an old cow, if she has good maternal instinct, will act when she gets around. A dog gets around her, she just dropped the calf. She'll stand over top of that calf trying to protect it. That's all it takes out here at night. You got a coyote or a pair of coyotes, he may want the afterbirth, no doubt. But when that old cow standing there twisting and ringing over top of that calf, trying to protect the calf from the coyote, she doesn't know that all he'll come in and get is afterbirth. But she'll stomp her own calf. I mean, we've seen it with the, the black vultures do it during the daytime. We've seen that happen. Uh, you know, you're talking. The way uh, prices of fertilizer and everything doesn't sound like much, but three or four calves uh, is a big loss. 
That's exactly right. You know, I mean, that's, uh, I'm talking, that could be a profit on small places. But uh, anyway, so that's, you know, the state is trying to do a good job and help people out with it. Uh, trying to work with us. Uh, they recognize the problem, like I said, and uh, hopefully it's just a control method and more people can get behind it a little bit. Uh, you know, ranchers and, and hunters and everything try to everybody out for these things well ralph i sure appreciate it and I, I i had seen ralph headed out the gate and i thought i bet that's a coyote man and sure enough it was and uh listen i really appreciate you taking the time ralph and letting everybody know people just have no idea of this problem well and, and another thing you know we talk about calves and deer but your little gray fox red fox see coyotes eat all this they we were about learning to see any more of them on the ranch anymore our little ground born owls uh, you know, really making hawk, an impact. Yeah, grasshopper sparrows, all this stuff that they're trying to, to save, you know, you get coyotes running around eating their eggs and eating them. And, uh, since we've done some control work on the ranch, we've seen our ground boring owl start to come back. We've got our gray fox coming back. And these are all native species of Florida, you know. And uh, we even have a few red fox still now that came in in front of the, the coyote. And they, and they do do some damage to them. You know, they're part of the uh, our system down here, our native stuff. So, and, and you're never going to get rid of all the coyotes. We're still going to have coyotes. It's just a control method, kind of like the hog situation. You know, you, you just have to control them a little bit. And just keep it down as much as we can. Exactly. And it's, everybody gets behind it. There's a lot of people out there, you know. You, you have a lot of your hunters that sit on the stand. They won't shoot a coyote because they don't want to mess up their deer hunting kind of understand that a little bit. Well, they sure will be better off to take that coyote out of there, you know. Isn't that the truth? And then the deer population will continue to thrive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, but anyway, that's kind of what we've been up to here. That'll work. And Ralph, thank you again so yeah. much, and we appreciate your time. You're welcome. You're welcome.